How's it going guys? Will here. Today we're going to be talking about this, specifically this. Those of you who've seen the setup video, which you can check out up there, you may know that I have to send off my main video camera, this GH5, again, but I wanted to make some videos. Then I remember this old challenge that I wanted to do when I had the iPhone 7. As the 7 stood though, the video quality wasn't quite good enough for me to make a full video shooting only on the 7, but I've recently upgraded my personal phone from the 7 to the 10, and this thing has a plethora of new really great video features. Features. And Matty Hapoya managed to do the same thing on an iPhone 11 Pro, so why not give it a go with the 10? Okay, I gotta get this thing packed up because it's been collected in- oh crap, like, this thing's been collected in like half an hour, so I gotta go pack this thing up, then let's switch to the iPhone. McDonald's that was delicious gotta say though filming in public even though it's less conspicuous It is very much easier to do on my big camera because at least none of the quality is gonna be good I'm like I don't know if the audio is being picked up on this and no flip out screen I Haven't tried filming with the front-facing camera yet. Hopefully this looks good as it is. Hopefully it sounds good Tell you what look at this jacuzzi Toronto hot tub. They got these blow-up ones here for like much less money I was thinking about getting one of these a while back. Decided against it. Okay, so this vlog should have been finished days ago now, but I need to walk my dog, and I suppose this acts as like a nice low light test. In fact, now it's a dynamic range test. Should I leave the fire lit or maybe I should wait till it goes out first. Okay, so I'm actually reshooting this segment because the first time it was unusable. I'll be talking about why later. But for now, we're going to be talking about whether or not I liked vlogging with the iPhone. And the answer to that is kind of. There are things that I really like and there are things that I really don't like about vlogging with the iPhone. So first of all, things I look for in a good vlog camera are quality, battery life and ergonomics. First of all, the rear iPhone camera can shoot 4K at 24 FPS like I'm doing right now. And honestly, it's pretty good. The quality is decent, the dynamic range is decent, the autofocus is decent. But from looking at the slow-mo footage I got, the autofocus is still not quite there yet. Don't get me wrong, it's a massive step up from the slow motion on the iPhone 7, but it's still not quite usable. As for the audio quality, it's pretty good, but this quickly brings me on to ergonomics. So, I can't add a tripod to this thing, nor can I add an external microphone. I'm currently simply holding the phone, which means my footage is going to be shakier and my arm gets tired much faster. Oh. It's also significantly less intuitive because I have to hit that button on the screen rather than having a physical dedicated button to start my video recording. And something else I will say is that usually I'm not too fussed about the lack of a flippy screen. I can usually frame myself up in my lens. So usually the lack of a flippy screen isn't really a big deal for me when I look for a vlog camera. But in the iPhone, it's much more of a big deal. Because of the tiny lens, I can't properly see myself to frame myself up. Hence why I'm reshooting this, because the first time I shot it, it was like this half the time. It really was completely unusable. And so I would recommend vlogging 
like this with the front facing camera, where you do get a significant quality loss, 1080p versus 4K, I would honestly say it's absolutely worth it for the framing benefits. As for stability, I don't think this lens is image stabilized, so it is gonna be a little bit shaky as I can already see. But overall, vlogging on the iPhone camera hasn't been all that bad. It certainly wasn't as bad as I expected it to be. Now, in a minute, you will see one of the main drawbacks of this camera, which does happen to be low light. I shot a whole section in my garage at about 7 p.m. when the sun was setting and the noise level was just ridiculous. So make sure you have good light. If you want good framing, use the front facing camera. And if you want to shoot slow motion, make sure you get a third party app where you can manual focus so you can avoid that focus pulsing. Come on. We're back. Right, so before it gets too dark, I wanted to test the front facing camera. Chances are framing's probably better, but quality's probably slightly worse. What has this been like? Well, would I personally use my iPhone for vlogging over my DSLR? Absolutely not. But is it possible to vlog with your phone in 2019 and get a good amount of quality? Absolutely. By the way, one of the main reasons why I'm doing this video is because I had to send my GH5 back. Again, I've got content with Dr. D coming up. I've got the iPhone 10 review coming up. Hopefully I get the GH5 back in the next few days and I can return to my normal schedule as soon as possible. Ha, wrong. Shut up. <laughs> okay, so we are back on the GH5 now. And while it is very nice to be back on the GH5, shooting on just the iPhone was a fun experience. As somebody who does video for a living, shooting only on something that I keep in my pocket was kind of a weird challenge at first. But as I've almost proved to myself, it's definitely possible nowadays. All right, guys, so thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now, and I will see you guys in the next one.